Red, red, red. I'm Red Wine and I'm a singer songwriter, soundscaper. I'm a producer. I made a bunch of different style stuff from a bunch of different genres, from classical to like Waka Flocka, Candy Paint and Goatee to to Two On to Hot Box by Bobby Brackens. A bunch of different stuff. It really just depends on on the day and the time. I kind of have a blend of a bunch of different sounds from from jazz, contemporary to to. Traditional classical, I do a lot of like string scoring and movements. I was classically trained in college, but before then I've been playing the guitar since I was in fifth grade. I really started playing the drums when I was five. Started playing the piano when I was like three or four. And I just always just had a real passion for, for sound and creating my own sound and, and really expressing myself because I wasn't always that good with words. r bass to me is really kind of where, where things evolve in R&B music. Like it was, it was a different generation when R&B first first was created. It's not to say that it, it wasn't amazing for what it was, but now I feel like there's a different pulse to society. We interact with our music differently, and as we evolve, so does our music. So I feel like it's really where every genre and the things that we love about every genre kind of meet in one place, where you can you can rap and you can sing, you can you can do whatever it is, but but you really gotta feel it in your heart, and that's what bass does. You feel those frequencies, those those mids and those lows in your chest and it makes you want to move, it makes you want to act. And, and that's what society is now. Our culture is just really more interactive. Well, I kind of got plugged into the West through, through one of my best friends in the world, Bobby Brackens, amazing dude. But I met him right after he had done a couple records that hit Billboard. And, uh, and I was just really working hard. I had done uh, a project called The Red Pill. It was an amazing mixtape. And I got uh, some attention off of that. And um, when uh, his publisher brought him through, and uh, once we linked, we were just really cool. And, and we just kind of spoke the same language. And off top, we were able to just kind of really get to good music and really create our own sound. We're all in the same studios, and a lot of us are working together, whether you know it or not. And, and that's how music happens, it's, it's real life. It's a reflection of our day-to-day -day lives. And, and the West is in the West, and when, when you're in the West, you can't help but get changed. I'm not even from from LA. I'm from Dallas, Texas, born and raised, and I went to college in Minnesota. But but something about the West taking you in, it just kind of changes your whole perspective of music. Newest weapon of choice that I think is probably going to slaughter everybody and everything computing wise this year is uh, is the new HP Avid Station. It's crazy. It's like more power than you can imagine. More more RAM, more processing speed, and in unlimited amount of reach. And as far as my sound, I really like to grab a lot of analog elements. I'm classically trained. I play every instrument based on the Western scale musically. So from grabbing a violin or a viola to grabbing a bass or an acoustic guitar or electric guitar and being able to run them through these 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 DAWs, it really kind of allows you to take things to the next level. Well, Logic 9 to 10, that was a, a hard step because of the, the way the plugins interact in one versus the other. But the thing that made it easier for me was the amount of like memory that I was able to use going from platform to platform. And, and, and what I, my old process, especially in nine, was I would do some instruments and then stretch and stretch and stretch the process and speed and then try to get it into Pro Tools. Because Pro Tools to me is really that finisher, like where you go and you make it a real song, a real record. Cause you can, anybody can make a beat, but to me a producer has, being a producer really has nothing to do at all with making the beat. It has to do with taking all the parts that are made and getting them all in one place. I'm a workaholic, so I usually sleep maybe four or five hours a night, just cause I'm so passionate about what I do. But I'll usually work till late in the night, uh, usually like writing, it'll be me and Bobby in there till like four or 5 a.m. and then well, I'll take a nap and I'll wake up usually around 9 a.m. and get back to it because my brain is the most fresh thing. So I'll go in and really just start either prep prep work for, for the next day. I'll start putting together sounds that I want to use in my next sessions because I go I go from scratch in every single session I have. So I don't like to have like beats laying on the side. I do the vocal and the beat at the same time. So if I'm working early in the morning for a complete song, I'll write and produce it. And, uh, and just get the whole thing drawn out. And then that's how I'll start the day. And then by my second session, usually at one, uh, I'll be ready for, for phase two. I'll get a workout in between. And then 
I'll, I'll really just start going in on the beat. I usually, when I make beats, I'm melody driven because I feel like the chords and the melodies and, and, and the drums give it that backbone. So the drums really should just amplify like the syncopation and the top line. So I really like my drums to support my melodies so that there's a defined key and chord changes so that a writer can really come in and get loose. And once the writer is able to come in, I really produce for the, to spark, spark an idea in the writer. And once the writer is, is ignited and they're able to really pin something, I'll go in and, and, uh, and move the beat out of the way to really make the story the best story it could be. Hotbox really started me, me, and, uh, me and Bobby Brackens were in the studio and one of our infamous uh, turn up party studio sessions, we were living that life. And uh, and the, we had it really start off with that mm, doo -doo, doo, and we just layered it. Cause I wanted something a little lower that like you could still where you still feel the pocket. Then the 808, just for the club, like you could just feel it kind of just start taking off. And then just a little bit of magic. But it's really kind of built around the groove is the main thing. Just keeping that pocket running and running. So it picks up a little bit. It's kind of space, really. So it's the same thing, but kind of different textures of the same space. It's uplifters, downlifters, transitions, like space, noise, side chain, syncopation. Just those little things. Then it just starts to pick you up with that build that. kind of it can't it, it really started off with with Bobby again like he did the man's amazing and uh with Tuan um he had already been working with Tanache before from like a while ago like I think even maybe back when she was in the stunners and um we had a session and he brought her through uh the old studio I had in the hills in Studio City and um she came over and we met we were sitting around because of course Bobby was late and um and just talking, chopping it up. Cause my main thing, I don't like to work with strangers. Like I like to take time, get to know you. And then we can feel comfortable about creating together cause it's such a personal experience. So it was me, Bobby and Tanache in the studio and we just throwing around ideas. And, and we just went in from scratch and it kind of started off with the, with the melody, the melodies that were, were in that section, just that lead scent. And Bobby wanted to just really be really cool, really sexy, had that space because he had a vision for what Tanache would be and how she would how she could pull it off and her swag and her style and what he liked about it. So he really wanted to accent those pieces. So we were in there jamming and we kind of just kind of crafted each and every piece and it was a cool pocket and it was so understated. And then the way he kind of put the top line melody on there, it, it just it had so much space. So really production wise, my main thing was to keep the space but also have the impact points and 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 the cool factor of just being able to feel the breeze like yeah like i think i think we actually made the record june 2013 originally like the first 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 version that we started working off of but it was really based on like the cool and it was another one of those sessions where we were truly feeling to on so it was it was real life and it's how we felt when we felt when we were too on we were making the song so that's really kind of the philosophy. Like you can't make music you don't relate to. So, and then after after we kind of start off all the melodies and everything, and we had everything going, um, DJ Marley Waters came in, and he's he's really good with his kick patterns and eight oh eights, and 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 he kind of, he came in and, and he helped he helped touch it up and add some more syncopation to it, and then then from there, like it, it evolved even more. And, and then uh, we were blessed enough to have like one of the hottest producers at the time, um, DJ Mustard come in and, and, and add his flair on it and, and, and kind of just tweak it and, and really make it add to the magic. All right, so I'm gonna break down two on real quick. Um, I really built off uh, that main synth line, that, that pocket, that sway. And I really kind of wanted to make it do a little bit more. So I just kind of freaked it a bit. So it does that. So 
So it's the same thing, but it's not as in your face. I kind of rounded off the edges so that you can kind of feel it swing with you. And it just kind of sways. And then uh, it's really built on space and really feeling like strings and plucks and everything build. So there's just the things that give it space and time and build. really like multi space and glitches and some in contrast just for texture so you could feel like you feel things passing you it's not too much going on but you know that you're moving like almost like you sitting in the back of a bus and as things happening it's not too dramatic because you see what you see but it's really built on that that build and even even when I came in I did the low end the sub it's like it really just kind of supports the same pocket that was in the lead And my main thing too that I wanted to make sure was that just from the sense alone, you get the time and you get the space, you get the pocket, you can feel everything in there and everything is just acting. It's just like textures and accents. So you just got the groove and you just building a groove, kind of really similar to kind of how I did Hotbox. So it's like a counter melody in there, but, but it stands alone. And then have the strings, like, being able to play off those melodies in this thing. Especially because I'm like really string bass, so I wanted to make sure that everything kind of accented, the vocals accented, the beat and the beat accented the vocals and that there was a space for everything. So especially when I was like doing the glitches on the vocals and everything, I wanted to make sure that that it was catching time, but it wasn't throwing you out of time. Like sometimes in pop music, it'll be like a glitch that's to lead you to a different beat. I wanted everything to feel effortless so you didn't even realize there were so many glitches. If you listen to the acapella, it's 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 pretty glitch heavy like John can you get fit to turn up a poet on it till I can even think no more. Can you get right to go drum then go more drum then we can keep a little let's roll. I love to get to one that's that's but it's really built on that because there's like hard counts and, and you can groove and you're hitting the beat every time and the glitches kind of give it a little bit of personality but she's able to keep her swag while still moving with the beat grooving with the beat and kind of moving around and so that whole balance was really the fun part of making that song was was making the beat be as minimalistic as possible still feel like it gets really big feel like it, it gets really small but it's it's still a space and a time and then having the vocals dance around it especially because Tanache's main thing that really makes her magical is, is her tone and her texture so to really be able to play off of that versus a minimalistic soundscape where we can she can really display that is really fun once i got all the pieces i, I brought it over to jason joshua and he uh he really made a little nugget of amazement he beefed up everything rounded off everything and anything i could have really asked for from a mix he gave me and and I got another one on the way that he makes that I'm pretty excited about too. But but he does his thing, and 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 as soon as I got to kind of hear how it was coming together, and especially like Tanache's camp and and, and Trevor Gerardo over at uh, RCA, like they really kind of handled it appropriately, like with kid gloves as far as the way the audio came together, and uh, and from there it was a hit.